they were the only company that has a fully integrated holistic and growth centric approach to porn addiction recovery. So we really try to look at the whole man as, or the man as a whole, right. And these different parts his fitness, his mental health, his emotional health, his spiritual health, and kind of address it from all of those, um, pieces. But we have a month right in the middle of our program that is more outwardly focused. So month one, very internal looking, healing any internal wounds, healing the root cause of it, identifying the root cause, identifying triggers, figuring out what boundaries need to be put in place. We all do that in the first month, casting a new vision for the man that we can become. Month two is kind of outwardly focused. And this is where I, I say we help guys reshape the heart. So everything is kind of re, right? Rebuild recovery, reboot your life is kind of the core curriculum that we put guys through, helps them rebuild their body, rewire their brain and reshape the heart. The reshaping of heart, I say, is changing how we see people because porn obviously places women specifically, but most often, most humans as objects in your life, it's like, what can I get out of them? So during that month, it's very service oriented, like literally doing things like you're doing, waking up one morning and sending three random text messages to somebody like, or three different people, like just gratitude messages. Like, Hey man, it's been a long time since I've, you know, we've connected, just been thinking about you, love you. If there's anything you need from me, I'm praying for you. Don't hesitate to reach out. You're like, you're not expecting anything in return. And we have them go do random acts of kindness or actually dedicate two hours to service. And you know, what I see that doing, right you know, is reshaping how you see people and how you see yourself as well. Pornography, very, um, uh, it's, it's for you, right? It's very self. It's, it is a selfish behavior. It's like, you even said it, I watch porn when I don't feel good. So I use objectifying and exploiting other people to make myself feel a certain type of way. So when you're triggered to do that, the best thing to do is figure out what can I do for somebody else? Begin to think outwardly, right? Serve, love, give to other people. And then the byproduct is what comes back to you. So I love that. I don't even know if like, that's what you thought that you were doing, but I think it aligns a lot with, with what we do. But yeah, like I said, it's, we, 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 we try to take a fully integrated approach. So it's, it's built on a biblical foundation, you know? So I say, I'm a man of faith that runs a porn addiction recovery organization, as opposed to we are a faith based program, uh, which there's a lot of great organizations and companies out there. There's a lot of great church organizations as well that, that do that. We tried to position ourselves separate from that. And people know that, Hey, when they come into rebuilt recovery, they're working with a man of faith. It's going to be built on biblical principles. But if you're not somebody that maybe subscribes to the Bible worldview, or you don't have even that as, as, as a belief system for you, we're not going to turn you away. Like we're still going to welcome you and accept you in. It's allowed me to help people from all walks of life. 20 plus countries at this point, atheists, agnostics, Muslims, Buddhists, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. So built on a biblical foundation, broken into, you know, really three core components over three phases. So the core components is a literal structured program. So I believe the only way to overcome this for good is to become the man that is no longer addicted to porn. And in that word become rest, a massive identity change, right? Like you must become a new individual. Any lasting transformational change is going to be rooted in identity change. First, when I hear you say, I'm still tempted in the thought of maybe pornography. I was like, well, Larry somewhere hasn't completely removed the option of pornography out of his life. Now I don't think you struggled with it to the depth that I did, or even maybe the men that we work with. So maybe looking at it that way, wasn't necessary for you, but as a new identity or with the new identity, of a porn free man, the option when you're triggered to even look at it is no longer there, right? It's like somebody that used to smoke cigarettes. If you say, Hey, would you like a cigarette? No, I'm trying to quit or no, thank you. I no longer smoke. We want to take on the identity of no matter what's happening in my life, no matter how triggered I may be, porn isn't the option for us. And I think that helps shape a new identity. So that's our approach. And we're going to give you mm -hmm. a, a program to kind of walk you through that. And it starts with knowing how you've got here. So understanding root cause of the issue, but then really casting a vision for the man that you can become. So we, we want to set an aim into the future, you know, whether it's a year, three, five years that we begin to work towards bringing in the science behind this, right? Dopamine can be released within the pursuit of new goals. So if we wake up every day working towards becoming this man and we're clear and intentional about the steps that we make and recognize ourselves, we begin to feel better as we move closer towards becoming that man. So a lot of guys struggle at the end of the day, right? It's been long. You haven't maybe accomplished the things that you wanted to do. You haven't kept all the promises. You skipped the gym, you hit the snooze, you didn't get the walk-in, you didn't you know, write a note for your wife. 
we take a very structured approach to making sure every day is a win and you recognize that. So the need to satisfy yourself after a losing day is no longer there. And then through the time of staying abstinent and beginning to pull on these levers, month three is more about creating new habits, new physical challenges. We literally have brush hand with the opposite, you know, brush your teeth with the opposite hand, like just kind of pulling on different things that kind of create new patterns within your brain. So a program, there's a massive community of guys that we regularly fellowship with. That's a big part of it. Any addiction recovery successful company will tell you that the community and the foundation is a massive part of it. And then we bring in the, you know, the one-to-one -one support and accountability, uh, just to make sure, especially early on, like when you say you're doing certain things, like are people following up? Are you being held accountable to, to your word? So yeah, that's everything kind of in a big, you know, snapshot 30,000 overfoot view, I guess. Very cool. Can we talk just a little bit more before we wrap up here? I want to talk a little bit more about that. Um, the temptation thing, because mm -hmm. you got you got me super curious about this. Because I, I, as you were talking, I, I you probably saw my eyes kind of wander. I was I was thinking about an analogy, and you just challenged me with something. I'll, I'll be honest, like I'm like, hmm. I was like, that's really interesting. Like, you know, maybe maybe there's further work for me to do, um, even though I don't I don't I don't you know entertain that habit anymore. But like, that's still you know, it's in my mind every now and again. Mm -hmm. But let, so let me ask you this. <clears throat> I'll give you an example of an analogy that I have. My kids joke with me a lot because I don't eat fast food. Like I just don't, like I haven't for years. Like I don't eat Taco Bell. I don't eat McDonald's. I don't eat Burger King. I don't eat Chick-fil-A. Like I don't eat, yeah. I, I never do like ever. And my kids are like, why don't you eat that stuff? I was like, why would I eat that? St I don't eat that stuff. Like I don't eat that stuff. Like it just doesn't compute for me. Yeah. Like I won't eat it. Like, even if my kids are like wanting to go through McDonald's, I, I will, and I don't get them McDonald's a whole lot. Like it's, it's, it's very rare, like maybe once a year at the most, but they'll joke with me. They're like, what are you going to get? I'm like, yeah, nothing. I'll eat at home. And they're like, you don't want like a Big Mac. I'm like, no, like I don't eat that. So like I have an identity that I don't eat that. Right. I, especially McDonald's. I'm like, I don't eat McDonald's period. Yeah. And, um, but it's interesting. Like <clears throat> I don't. I don't need a, and that was my 18 year old who just walked by. So I gave him a thumbs up cause he looks all handsome and snazzy. He, he's all dressed up. But, uh, I, the, the interesting thing is this, like, I don't need McDonald's to survive. Right. And I, and it's not necessarily like, um, what, what am I trying to say here? So sex drive. Well, shoot, man, as I'm saying this out loud, maybe it is like, so the urge to reproduce and the urge to have sex. I, I feel like it's such a human thing in us, right? Like it's such a drive in us. Yeah. Right. And, and we have so many different, like even emotions about it. Right. Like, like, uh, when, when we have sex, we feel love, we feel validation. We feel all these things, right. When we don't have sex, we feel rejected. We feel sometimes, yeah. you know, that kind of thing. So it's like, I can pass McDonald's without even being tempted. Like I have no desire for it whatsoever, but I also have an identity in that. But when it comes to sex, it's, I guess the story I'm telling myself is it's such like a primal thing yeah. that I, do you know what I'm trying to I say? Would, I'm trying I to would, figure this would, out as I'm would, saying no, out loud. I would hundred percent yeah. know exactly what you're saying. And I, I guess, you know, the challenge then becomes right. Like, are you actually thinking about procreating and having sex in the moments that you just explained to me that you're triggered, which is when you're avoiding doing work or when you're home alone, like are those scenarios where your brain is even, even if you want to go deep inside, like your animal part of your brain is not like now's the opportune time for us to have sex, right? No, the porn has become a pattern That's of behavior true. that processes other internal, um, Neur neurological, not even neurological, um, neurophysiological issues, right? Stress, anger, avoidance. Those are the times that we go to distract ourselves with pornography. Like if you told me, Hey man, when I see a beautiful woman, I then think about maybe having sex with my wife. I'd be like, yeah, that's, that's the natural instinct of man wants to procreate with beautiful woman. Yes. I understand that. But I think what you say 
a lot of guys accept that, right? Because of that processing that I just watched you go through in real time, dude, I did that for, for decades, right? I think if you look at it through a different lens though, right? When I'm home alone, yeah. I'm not thinking about procreating. When I'm avoiding work, That's I'm not true. thinking about, you know, actually having sex. I'm thinking about avoiding those things. So it's become an alternative for those things. Like I got to cook the chicken. So in, 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 instead of avoiding, instead of doing that, I'm going to avoid it by getting the fast food. There's a better analogy, right? Yeah. <laughs> so my mind is blown right now because like, I never thought of it that way. Yeah. Because like, even as you're like, do I go to like, even if I don't want to cook, I am not going to eat McDonald's. Yeah. Like period. Yeah. Like there's no desire whatsoever. And, and you're exactly right. Like the temptation, hundred percent, man. Wow. Um, as I think about this and you took me through that, see, this is guys, this is why you need to go follow Frank. Yeah. And this is good, man. Because I, know you've had, I know you've had a lot of conversations with many of my I friends have. on the show about this. So coming yeah. in, I'm like, God, what is Larry even like, what are he and I going to talk about that? He hasn't already approached like, dude, this makes me feel amazing that like you no, had this, this is good. epiphany here moment, right? Because that means the audience, hopefully a lot of guys have maybe had the same wake up call here as well.